I am very thankful that you are all here. I pray that you had a happy Thanksgiving. I hope you got to be with friends and family and had a good time. We're very glad that you are here in our presence. But we also want to acknowledge those that are online right now watching. And we thank you for them. Trent, thank you. Uh, as you may have heard from Trent's message, I am not Trent Lowe. Uh, I couldn't grow the big beard. I tried, but it just didn't come in fast enough. But I do want to thank those that are listening right now. I know my family's at home, and I, I appreciate your love and support, Cindy. All right, well, last week, Trent began with a traditional Thanksgiving message. Firstly, let's just say we got a lot to be thankful about. Amen? Amen. All right. And our faith abounds in Thanksgiving. Faith is voice activated. It's a voice of praise. Uh, I want to thank the praise team. What an awesome way to get us started. All right. And so as I launch into this, let's just first have a word of prayer, okay? Father God, just help me to get out of my way. Father, these are Trent's words, but they're your words. And so, Father, what I'm delivering is just your message to your people. And so, Father, help me just to give you all the praise and glory you deserve, Father. I need to just step out of the way of myself and just let your message flow. Father, we ask this prayer in your precious son's name. Amen. Well, we enter his gates with thanksgiving and courts with praise. Why? Because the Lord is good. All right. We grew up in a church where we always said, and God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. All right. Well, he shows his mercy is everlasting. The truth endures for all generations, even this one right now that we're in and for those times to come. We thank him because we are blessed, truly anointed, and highly favored. Thanksgiving is the access code to the favor of God in our lives. And we look at this last week, and it's what I want to focus on today. The favor of God is the guarantee of his presence and the provision of his power to accomplish his special purpose in and through our lives. As we all raise our hands and declare the favor of God in our lives. Well, sometimes church... The journey to find more favor, the best way is to increase our favor in our lives is to increase our awareness that the favor of God is already here. That's what Thanksgiving is, the access code to the favor of God. Trent said last week that God doesn't give us his favor. Everybody say favor. favor. All right. We all say we love our little... Okay. Uh, and God doesn't give us his favor for our convenience, but instead it's given for his divine purpose. It's a critical distinction. Trent was talking with someone this last week, and he said, I don't want to be the church that just settles, right? The church that is pleased with the favor of God and takes a seat and says, we've arrived. We never want to take the blessings of God for granted just so that we can make our lives easier. Trent tells a story when he left the bank uh, to become a full-time pastor. Uh, those that knew that they had set aside two years of worth of salary for Trent, uh, many of those people that knew that said, well, what are you going to do when the money runs out? See, in the worldly view, that those funds were a safety net. As Trent said, those funds were a faith fund. And the day that account depleted was the first day our church was able to pay all the, the bills and pay his salary. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And you know, we haven't missed that mark yet. So when we got this money for the tech dot for this location, it would be easy. It would be easy to say, let's go rent or lease a spot. And that way we could guarantee Trent maybe 10, 15 years worth of guaranteed salary. So it would be safe for him and his family. But we don't want to be that church. We don't want to use God's blessing in our lives to make our lives easier. I want us to be known as a church that gives God's blessings back to him so he can have a greater impact and a blessing even more through it church what I want to encourage us to know is that as a church when God gives favor 
He expects our faith to grow in proportion to his favor in our lives. Faith abounds with thanksgiving, and God has given this church tremendous favor. Can we not all agree? But you need to know that Jesus says to him, who much has been given, much more is required. Jesus said that. He was talking about being a wise manager of God's resources. When we ask for more and God grants the more, know we're all asking for more responsibility too. Can I get an amen? amen? Let me ask you, have you been looking for favor this week? I pray that we really search for God's favor. It's crazy how favor is everywhere. You know, when you're looking for something more, you're prone to see it. Has it ever happened in your life when you're, let's say we're looking for a car. And you want to go out and buy a new car. Let's say it's a GMC truck. All of a sudden, everywhere you look, there's a GMC truck. At every stoplight, there's a GMC truck. Every TV commercial, GMC truck. All of a sudden, your phone starts getting these ads for GMC trucks. Now, is that just Big Brother? No. Or is it because you're now in the market and your eyes are open to see what, where the, the trucks have always, always been there? Well, I want to encourage you to get in the market for the favor of God. We're going to train our eyes to see God's favor, to discover the portions of favor that already exist, and to thank God for them, and then to realize the greatest way to thank God for his favor, because we could never pay him back. Can I get a witness? Do you understand that we can't pay him back? You can't respond to God's favor by owing him favor. And I was just telling someone back there, this really kind of messed me up early on in my walk. See, I thought I was doing God's favor to him by teaching a class or by praying or signing up for something or doing something. I thought me and God had an agreement. Chris, you have the immunity necklace now. You can do, life is going to be easy. And that didn't happen. And so me and God got in a little argument because I thought he had cheated me out of something I deserved. But that's not how it works, guys. That's not it. One famous pastor says, favor ain't fair. I, I had to work on that Texas part, ain't fair. It's just not natural to me. But there's nothing fair about God's favor. There is nothing fair about the cross. He took our place. And so our response to God's favor is to say, thank you, God, for this favor. God, show me how I can take this favor you've given me, the blessings you've given me, the influences you've given me, the money, the skills, the time. How can I channel that of your favor for others? Because God doesn't give you his favor for you. He gives his favor for his purpose. So it can flow through you, not just to you. That's why we said last week that the favor of God is a guarantee of his presence and the provision of his power to accomplish his special purpose in and through our lives. If you're taking notes, write these down. Ways to flow in God's favor. Number one, expect God's favor. Last week, Trent mentioned two prominent characters in the timeline of humanity, Moses and Mary, who found favor with God. One of them went on to lead a couple million people through the very dry land, 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. And one of them had to have a baby in inhumane conditions and face ridicule. But they both fulfilled God's purpose in their life. And that was bigger, that was better than their convenience. That's what favor is about. Okay, I'm not getting an amen. He said I'd get an amen there. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Trent, it must be all in the delivery. Sorry, brother. All right. But I bet if I told you I just won the lottery, I'm giving you all GMC trucks. All right. Now we're getting some response here. Well, see, God just doesn't offer to give you stuff. He offers to be something to you, to do something in you, to work something through you. That's called favor. And we can thank God for that. It's better than anything we can get from anybody in this world. Because it can't be taken away. It's a special something of God. Listen, we could have talked about a lot of different Bible characters. Abraham found favor in God's sight. Even though it meant him launching out into the unknown. And all God could 
told him was, go to the land, I'll show you. Uh, where are we going? I'll show you. Yeah, are we there? But isn't that what God's doing to connect right now? We don't know where we're going, but we know who we're following, all right? All right, all you know is that your shield and your exceeding great rewards because you have found favor. We talk about Moses, but we could have talked about Nehemiah. We could have talked about any number one of the characters in the Bible. I mean, Gideon, sure, he found God's favor. Esther, she found favor, and she saved a nation because of it. Favor will just do stuff in your life that makes you say, really, God, really? You're going to bless me this much? And I know that some of you are thinking right now, Pastor, I don't know if I believe all that. Well, you don't have to. If you don't believe it, I'll just take yours and I'll take mine too. All right? I'll reach over to your plate and take your favor off. All right? Because I, I've decided to look for God's favor in my, in my life and be thankful. I've decided that not even when bad things happen, I'm going to choose to believe that God works all things to the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. So I'm, I mean, this was hard for me, guys. This was hard because I used to look at it. I'm only being blessed when God likes me. And I must have done something wrong when I'm not being blessed. No, folks. Here's five scriptures. We're going to read them kind of fast. You can, you can jot them down. You can uh, reread them yourself later. Talk about it around your house or in your small groups. Leviticus 26.9. God says, I will look on you with favor and make you fruitful and increase your numbers. And I will keep my covenant with you. Psalms 5.12 says, surely, Lord, you've blessed the righteous. You surrounded them with your favors as with a shield. And I'd love to know that God's favor is not just before me, not just in my past, but it's in front of me. It's not just going through, through forward in the future, but it's also right around me, beside me, in every step I take. I love this. Trent wrote this. I love the song we sing called The Blessings. May his favor be upon you a thousand generations in your family and your children and their children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He is with you. He is with you. Wow. Do you like that? All in favor, say aye. Aye. <laughs> That was good. I don't care who you are. He kind of, that's a wordplay. Good job, Trent. All right. Psalms 84, 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. And no good things does he without those who walk in blameless. And some of you are saying, well, my walk isn't blameless. It doesn't apply to me, Pastor. I mean, if you only knew what I said on the way to church today when that guy cut me off, all right? Only if you knew how I treated my kids this week or something. I mean, we, we get that. Maybe it's, um, maybe we got it wrong. Maybe it's bestowing favor on me. It's not because I'm blameless. It's because Jesus was. See, he lived the life we couldn't live. He died the death we should have died. And now he offers his free favor to anyone who will believe him enough just to say, Lord, I receive your favor. Lord, I see your favor. Lord, thank you for the favor in my life. It won't be wasted. Man, that preaches, Trent. Thank you. Proverbs 3, 4 says, Then you will win favor if you obey my commands of the Lord, and you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and men. Acts 2, 47. They were praising God in the early church, and they enjoyed the favor of all the people, and the Lord added to their numbers daily those who were being saved. And oh, by the way, the Bible says that Jesus grew in wisdom and stature in favor with God and with men. Boy, I want to be more like Christ. I want to grow in, in wisdom. 
And I'm sure Trent wants to grow in stature. <coughs> Sorry, I put that in. Okay. But I want to grow in favor with God and men. I'm going to pay for that later. Okay. You can only say that if you're shorter than him, okay? If you're taller, you're just being mean, okay? Okay, because I'm a child of God, I've learned over the years, i just come to expect it, God's favor. Thank you, God. I'm telling you that when you're in the market for it and you're looking for it, when you expect it, there's a different vocabulary that you use than people that don't have it. See, God's favor is in their heart. There's a different dialect that invades you. Your heart, when you wake up in the morning, you don't talk about, well, I wonder what's going to go wrong today. You start talking about, I wonder how God's going to be good to me today. I wonder how God's going to take this challenge that I'm facing and use it to show how great he is today because I got the favor of God. I'm walking in the favor of God today. I'm thankful for God in my life today. If that's not you this morning, if that's not how you wake up, if you're not asking God to show his favor, maybe you're that guy or gal that just gets stuck at every red light. Maybe you're always bad things seem to be happening to you. Maybe you dropped your phone and it broke and you bent over to pick it up and your pants ripped. And you say, oh, that's the story of my life. You know, I, this, I used to have a saying, if it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. That was the story of my life. And some of us say stuff like that. And we need to quit saying that. Bad things happen. When bad things happen to you and you're always disappointed, you never expect God to be good to you. If that's the story of your life, you need a new writer. You need someone rewriting that because the Bible said God created man and said it is good. And at the end of the book, it says, we win. So everything in between is just a setup for God's glory. I mean, if David never had an opponent called Goliath, then God wouldn't have been able to show himself strong on David's behalf. The next time you face a giant, don't see it through the world's point of view. It's the big one. It's the one who's come to take us down. It's the one who's keeping us from the blessings. Stop seeing it that way. Start looking at it like this is an opportunity where if I could trust God, he can use me to do something that would be obvious to the rest of the world. That's God because it couldn't have been me. I can be a showcase for his favor. When cancer is defeated, that was God in his favor in your life. When COVID is conquered in a body that shouldn't have overcome, that was God. And when you saved a life because you were in the right place at the right time, it wasn't coincidence. It couldn't be. It was the favor of God. Being a child of God, having his favor is part of the package. It's kind of like Trent's kids having a funny dad. It's just part of the package. You know, they have friends come over and they say, your dad is so hilarious. And Trent's girls just kind of go, uh. See, they don't know how good they have it. They take for granted the fact that their dad is awesome. Trent, welcome to my world. Okay? And, and you are awesome, Trent. I don't care what other people say. Um, when you've been a Christian for as long as <laughs> the favor of God just becomes a part of the package, and since we start taking it for granted, but I want you to know, if you begin to expect again what it was like when you first encountered God, the favor of God. There are opportunities all around you. You don't need another opportunity. You need to open your eyes to the opportunity that God has already put in front of you. And then out of that, he'll give you a greater opportunity. If you're faithful in a little, he'll make you faithful over much. Part two, second note. One, expect God's favor. Two, Recognize it. Now, where are my 90s, folks? You better recognize. Yeah. Right. I, I, he wrote that. He, come on, Trent. That was silly. Okay. But let me tell you a quick story Trent's told. 
It's about his family got to go to a Texas Tech basketball game. Somebody had gotten them really, he used the word, sick tickets and gave them to his family because that's what you do when you're a good church member. <laughs> you show favor toward your pastor. That's what good church members do. <laughs> if you want to go from good to great, you lavish the guest speaker with expensive <laughs> gifts. All right. Some of these words might have been embellished. I don't know. I have an old printer. All right. So he gets to go to this game. He gets to go to this basketball game. And there's Dennis Rodman. And I know he's no Michael Jordan, and some of you don't like him. But for them at the time, this was like a big deal. I mean, they were kind of like excited. This is a cool moment for their girls. And they were like, hey, girls, you're not going to believe this, but that's one of the greatest basketball players in the world. And Kinsley, and you can just see this, looks back at her with those big eyes and just says, Daddy, can we get some cotton candy? <laughs> I mean, she didn't care who Dennis Rodman was. He was just this tall, tatted up dude and got in the way of her cotton candy. All right? And it goes to show you sometimes something great can be just in front of you, but you don't care because you're focused on something that doesn't matter at all. Because you're not mature enough to open your eyes and see that the favor that's right in front of you. Oh, man, that's deep. You know what I'm saying? We need to recognize the favor of God. Sometimes favor is in the room and you don't recognize it. Wow. Like Trent said last week, Jesus is the greatest of all. You can argue the fact that it's inarguable. Jesus is the greatest that has ever been and ever will be. Remember last week he told the story about Mary and Martha. Mary was at his feet and Martha was doing housework and stuff. Jesus was What's well, a one important thing there? Now, he could have said, you're staring right at it. But instead, he was the most important thing right in front of Martha, and she didn't get it. Some of us do that today. We look at a marriage and we say, boy, God's been showing his favor to them, and I'm stuck with this. It's not me, Cindy. That's not me. Um, but really, I, you know, you can look at a house. You can look at a car, a job, Christmas decorations, and think, wow, they're getting the favor of God. Why not me? Church, we're in that position where that would be easy for us to do, to look at another church building, another church group, and say, wow. Why can't that be us? I need to open my eyes and see the favor of God that's right in front of me, church. God will give you the favor you need for the season you're in to do what he's calling you to do. We need to change our tone. God, what is the favor you want to give me in this season? Man, that's a great question. It's amazing to look back over my life. You know, God was there every step of the way, giving me the favor that according to his wisdom, he knew I needed in that season. And when I look for God's favor in the season I'm in today, I realize he's been every step of the way and my heart should explode with gratitude. Number three, we need to respond to the favor of God in our life. You know, although you can't produce or achieve God's favor, you can position yourself to receive it. And favor isn't just a matter of luck and that even though you'll have difficult times, it's a matter that you, actually, he puts here, I pray you do run up against some opposition. Opposition. I know that sounds rude, but it's not intended to be. It's so that God can be shown strong on your behalf. I want us not only to expect to see God's favor in our life and recognize it for what it is, but truly respond to it. Lord, if I will follow hard after you, the Bible says, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. 
And so when I follow Jesus, favor follows me. He used this illustration of, in, in baseball, they teach, if you're a pitcher, don't try to place the pitch. What you have to do, you have to work on the mechanics of your throwing. And you have to get comfortable in your form and throwing the ball so many times that when you do rock back and throw it, the ball goes where it's supposed to go. Because you did what you were supposed to do. God's favor is like that. You don't leave trying to manipulate the circumstance or to create the solutions. You leave believing God for miracles and positioning yourself to receive those miracles through being where he calls you to be. Becoming who he called you to become and doing what he called you to do. So the commitment to favor isn't just God send me your favor. It's God I'm making a commitment to be in the place where your favor is falling. At the end of last week, Trent talked about walking in the fog. The fog, F-O-G, the favor of God. It's a haze. You can't really see clearly. You don't always know where you're headed. And even now, you're going to get to where you are, he's, wherever he's taking you. There's uncertainty and even some giants in the way. But if you're walking in the fog, the favor of God, then it doesn't matter what the future holds. You're with the one who holds it. It doesn't matter where you're headed. You're in the presence of the one who's already been there. Yes, there are giants in the past, but Scripture tells us, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are is loyal to him. When Moses finally trusted God and walked in the fog, times weren't always pleasant, but God was always present. And God accomplished great and mighty things through, through Moses. Mary endured what no mother ever should have to endure. But because she chose to respond and walk in the fog, it was the favor of God that made her blessings among all women. God's will was done through her. How did we as a church get where we are today? It was a fog. It was a favor of God. I don't know about you, but I want to be right in the middle of God's will in my life, right in the center of the highway of his best for me. See, favor aligns us to the part of his master plan. His will gets done, and we are blessed by association. God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But we got a choice whether or not we're the conduits that God uses. The favor of God, again, is not the same as favors from God. But if you respond to his favor, this, then his purpose can flow through you, not just to you. Let me show you what happens when we respond to God's favor when given the opportunity. In 2 Corinthians... 9.10. Notice what they're producing. For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Did you guys catch that? What's produced? It's not contentment. It's not happiness which most people would assume, but it produces generosity. See, the world can't comprehend this. They're saying, so someone gives you something, and you just give it back, and you give it to others? See, the world doesn't understand what God's purpose is. When we, when we respond to God and give back to God what he's given us, we're a candidate for his favor because we understand I'm blessed to be a blessing. And when we experience what God has done to me, they're thankful and God's snowball effect starts to work in them. And their faith abounds and the favor of God works in and through them to see a work of God that produces more thankfulness. Let me end with this last story. Jesus saw some beat down fishermen cleaning their nets one morning. They had a big problem. Their livelihood, their means of making money had all dried up. 
They hadn't caught any fish. They were facing unemployment, uncertain futures, not knowing what tomorrow will hold. But I want you to see what happens next in Luke 5, 2. Luke 5, 2. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge. For the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, stop there for a second. You ever notice that in the beginning was the word and the word was God? God spoke the word spoke the word and everything into existence. He spoke the cedar into existence that built the boat. So Peter thought, or Simon thought it was his boat when it was God's all along. I think that's a great analogy to use in our lives when we think about our wives, our husbands, our children, our church, our homes, our cars, our jobs. Uh, let's keep making a list. Emily, I love making lists. Anyway, because it's never ours. It's always been his. Isn't that? Let's keep reading. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, now go out where it's deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all last night. It didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. And this time, their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. What started out as a problem became their biggest blessing. Sometimes problems can be a blessing in your life when you have God with you. At this time, their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in, in the other boat, and soon both boats were filled with fish on the verge of sinking. Sometimes God's favor will leak into others and bless them too. You just have to be ready for it. When God starts to bless you, sometimes you're going to need a bigger boat. Verse 8. When Simon Peter realized what had happened, his life became easy and he was blessed and was able to retire. No, no, no. He fell to his knees before Jesus and said, Oh Lord, please leave me. I'm such a sinful man. For he was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught. He was awestruck by the favor of God as were the others with him his partners James and John the son of Zebedee were also amazed Jesus replied to Simon don't be afraid from now on you'll be fishermen and men and as soon as they landed they left everything and followed did you get that the thing they thought they wanted most their boats, their nets, nets, their livelihood, they left on the shore. And I'm sure that blessed somebody else. But they didn't care about their stuff when they were standing next to the source. Everything we have is a result of God's favor and how we respond to it in obedience, not just to expect it or recognize it, but to respond to it. You can have the stuff I want God's favor. Keep the fish. We want God's favor. There is somebody out here today, whether you're here in person or online, that really needs to hear this. Not only do you need to expect it and to accept it, but you need to respond to it. Jonathan, if you'd have the team come up, I'm going to as they're coming up here, I'm going to just lead us in a quick prayer because I, I think there's someone right now that needs to ask God to change out their lenses, to give them new eyesight to start seeing His favor, to start expecting it.
Would you bow with me? Father God, I thank you so much for these words today. Obviously, they weren't delivered in the way they were first intended, Father. But I truly believe we are still blessed by them. I truly believe that there's someone whose heart is longing to change their story. There's someone out there that has thought for so long that they're unworthy. That, Father, just give them a glimpse of how much they are loved and how you are just going to lavish them with your favor. Father, for us here today, may you bless us. For those listening online, Father, would you bless them? Father, help us to be a people that are more aware of your favor, but a people that are more generous in giving with that favor to others, Father. And we ask this in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And all of God's children said, Amen. Do you believe that this morning? Do you believe it? Let's stand up and give God thanks.